Hi, I'm Ryan LaPlante. And I'm Tyler Hewitt. And we are the crazy people who created both Garbage Town the Movie Podcast and Dum Dums and Dragons. And we are super excited to announce that we're starting a podcast production company called Garbage Productions. So if you head over to patreon.com slash garbage productions, you can actually subscribe for as little as $1 and you can get some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you can actually help support the show and help us get made. For a dollar a month, you get advance notice on all the upcoming movies on Garbage Town, so you can suffer through them yourself. You get advance notice on guests coming up on dd and so you have an idea of where that's headed, and you have access to our community and comments. For additional money, you get even more input, even more say, and you're even more a part of the shows. We definitely want to hear from you, so go over there, check it out, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, patreon.com slash garbage productions. Become a garbage person with us. Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never role-played before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukaki, your host. Previously, our heroes broke into Cragmaw Castle to save the dwarf Gundren and win back the throne for their new friend, Little Pim Pim. They've captured several goblins in the kitchen and are making threats. Will they succeed in their bakery-based ambush, a.k.a. Bambush? Will the goblins turn on their new masters? Will Lil Pim Pim stop trying to kill Quiddy? Find out next on Dum Dums and Dragons! If he's going to come through my legs, I'm going to re-edit this moment. As he runs through, I'm going to yell, This is a sticker! Make me a cake, motherfuckers! <laughs> so uh, there's like a classic cut to like all the goblins freeze and one of them's holding like a sauce spoon and the sauce drips in a hilarious <laughs> like, Oh, well, life keeps going when scary things happen. <laughs> and all the goblins are like, Yep, okay, yeah, I think that's fair. Oh, okay. Nice. All right, so I welcome the rest of the band in, and we close the door, and, like, I'm I'm staying by the door because nobody's yeah. getting past so me So I assume you're out. also closing. There's a, an additional door that leads further into the, the palace, so I assume you're going to, or the castle, rather. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch that one. Yeah, we'll gesture right. Queenie over to that door, and I learn to the warlord, and I'm like, all right, so this girl guy totally, like, screws you over, so what would be, like, the most ironic cake shape to send to him? Like, how would they know it's you, like, if you want to send a dangerous message? Well, we don't what, want what, to know what, it's him. No, I'm baking two cakes. I got a plan you for Garbo. You're baking a cake inside of a cake or <laughs> no, something? No, 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 no. There's, there's one cake. <laughs> the and, no. cake. There, there's, there's the meal they're expecting that Garvo's got to drop. And then after we kill the two hobgoblins, we can send Garvo in with an ironic cake and then attack. I lo- Listen, Moonhammer's really into ironic cakes. <laughs> it right. doesn't come up that often, but when you get the chance, you roll with it. Like, so, the so bachelorette we're... party gets a dick cake, but, like, what would be, yeah. like, a, a fuck you that girl would be like, oh, no. I'm just saying we're, we're ruining our chances of an element of surprise. No, no, no just, just for the second one. The first one, we do food. So we're ruining our chances... <laughs> for an element of surprise for attacking Grohl. No, no, no. We're going to send it in. <laughs> He's going to look at the cake and be like, oh, no. And the moment he goes, oh, no, we kick open the door and murder him. Wait, so the cake is ironic, like in a message, or it's like ironically, like we send like a bunch of chicken wings and we're like, oh, it's a cake. <laughs> uh, which one would be like, oh, no, it's the warlord. Um, <laughs> honestly, just uh, if, if, if we could build like a crossbow into a cake, that we could control remotely. <laughs> and then as he's taking a bite of the cake, the crossbow shoots him into so, his mouth. So I turn That's to the perfect. goblins and I say, that, we need the meal you're making now, and we need what he just said. Get to work or we'll murder you. Okay, which of you do you think has the most proficiency in building... A booby trap cake? Devices? Quinny, by a mile. Quinny, all right. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Jesus Christ. Okay, um... So Wait, I, what does remote control uh, mean in our world? Uh, I'm going to just... I'm going to say a clockwork crossbow or mechanism. Or is it a mage hand that pulls the trigger? Much, much better idea. Awesome. Okay, so Quinny and Alan are going to work on the booby trap cake <laughs> that just says, like, great job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're the best king. <laughs> Happy King Day. King Day is every day. Uh, and <laughs> the warlord and I will watch the doors, but we're also supervising them making, like, the, the meal that's going to get spilled to distract the hobgoblins because it's got to look like a meal, but when it drops, it's got to be quiet. So I'm like, warlord... You're in charge of the menu. It's just got to be quiet when he drops it. Okay, great. All you goblins, I just want you to take a, a bunch of potatoes and a bunch of rice and a bunch of water and just boil them up into like a gross little stew. And then <laughs> that should be quiet enough, I think. All right, so half the goblins are making stew and half of them are on Team Booby Trap Cake. So the goblins who are making the stew, um, a couple of them are, they're, they're, they're basically, um, you realize it's a it's kind of an understocked kitchen uh, in terms of its goods because King Grawl clearly didn't invest in, you know, a pampered chef or anything. So um, you notice that uh, they keep kind of eyeing the pot you use as armor with like a desire and avarice. And they're kind of like, um, pardon me, giant scary orc man. Could we perhaps borrow your stew pot rather than using these five tiny pots? 
Yeah, sure. I s- slip out of my cauldron armor. So I'm just in jeans at this point. <laughs> <laughs> You know, how, how good do you look? I have clearly let myself go, <laughs> <laughs> exposing the facade of my success. Are you, are you just cauldron shaped underneath the cauldron? <laughs> just <now? laughs> you, had, you had to add the cauldron to fit the pot belly. It's so just like, I, oh, oh. I leave Goblin Jr. to like guard the door, and I take some of Quinny's rope, and then I take the five small pots, and I build him a, another suit of armor out of those five pots. Two pots of so shoulder like guards. A pot samurai? Yeah, so he's got a pot on each shoulder. He has a, two chest <clears> pots <throat> that are sort of like, like a breastplate, but it's almost <laughs> like a shell bra from the Little Mermaid. And then the biggest pot we put over his, his gut, and that's his new armor. So it's probably better. The biggest pot is a tiny pot. That's why they need to just pot armor in the first place. So Yeah, no, it, it checks out, though. It's, it, <laughs> it's the biggest one of the five. Yeah, it's, so, like the, it's like the Dark Knight armor where it's all just like little pieces, yeah. and it looks super like. <laughs> but, but it grabs their attention, <laughs> yeah. so they're way more likely to hit it than just with one big thing. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Love when the DM just resigns and says, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Are you broken yet? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, the greatest strategy is to <laughs> upend the social moral order <laughs> by the dungeon master. <laughs> Ooh, and then I lean over to the warlord and I say, additional cake plan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your giant cauldron. After we send in the murder cake, you and I will stand on either side of the door. And then we'll put the big cauldron over Goblin Jr. just outside the door. So after he gets shot with the cake, he'll be like, what happened? And he'll open the door and see a cauldron. He'll be like, what's this? And pick it up. And then Goblin Jr. can attack him. And we'll both hit him from the side. It'll be the best. Great. We should also think of cool quips to say when the deed is done. Okay. So let's, uh, you guys, how's the cake coming? How much time do we have to draft this? <laughs> He's expecting a meal soon. So it has to be done right. relatively quickly. <laughs> Okay, so in the process of building your complex plan, um, you'll have to pass a series of checks in order to uh, be able to pull off this wild scheme. Butthole and Lil Pim Pim, we're going to start with you guys. You're doing two things right now. You're trying to come up with impressive quips. Uh, you are also trying to keep your goblin team of cooks inspired. Because, you know, as, as you know, uninspired cooking really goes a long way. Now... You're at a bit of an advantage because you're already much better than poor dead Yarg, whose brains are still seeping into the floor outside. Uh, however, neither of you are uh, master chefs, uh, nor have you been on Hell's Kitchen, so this is a bit of a challenge for you. I'm going to need uh, both of you to roll me either a persuasion check or an intimidation check. I think, uh, little Pim Pim, you're probably going to want to roll intimidation. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, scared. You're, you're a bad cop and I'm a good cop. I have 19 total. 17 total. Excellent. So your first round of, of a couple uh, goes very well. You know, the goblins are actually pretty happy that you're not, like, breaking plates over their heads. I mean, they're scared of a little pim pim, but, like, it's a fear uh, based in respect. So yeah, and I mean, we're just having to make a stew that's got to look like a stew. Like, it's pretty low, <laughs> low tech. <laughs> they're, they're goblins. This is, this is like, one of the greatest challenges of, of, their, uh, of their lives. <laughs> Team Trigger Cake. Um, oh, that's, <laughs> that's going on a T-shirt. <laughs> Quinny, you are uh, in the process of... It, it, you don't have to really craft too hardy a mechanism. But what you've realized is a hand crossbow firing inside a cake is problematic for a number of reasons. So you're actually trying to build a tiny chamber that will house the crossbow and aim it at just the right angle. Uh, I'm going to need you to uh, work to craft this. Hmm. Uh, so I'd like you to roll me a check and add your dexterity, please. All right. So that's a total of five. So you're having some trouble uh, as you kind of test fire the crossbow out of the uh, the slit in the box that um, the angle might be wrong. And you know if you miss the shot and it just scores across Grohl's face, it's really not going to be that effective. Right. So uh, you're getting in there and you're tinkering with the aiming mechanism on the crossbow itself. You worry, though, that a few more failures and you might have actually just ruined the crossbow and that's any chance of making the trigger cake work. Oh, man. Okay. Alan, meanwhile, Mm -hmm. you uh, realize that in order to mage hand this thing, you're going to need to add a minor enchantment so your mage hand knows exactly where it's uh, trying to pull because you won't be able to physically make eye contact. Right. So uh, I'm going to get you to roll an arcana check to attempt to enchant the the crossbow mechanism. Total of 10. You... Start uh, trying to work on it. You realize this is uh, this isn't an enchantment you've ever had to do before, so you have to improvise a little bit. Mm-hmm. Magic's very tricky when you start to improvise, um, and you get the sense that uh, you've created a bit of noise around the trigger mechanism, uh, sort of magical noise, not literal yep, noise. Yep. And uh, if you continue to work the way you are, perhaps it'll get to a point where it's just going to be too messy for your mind to focus. So I, I lean over to uh, the warlord and I just say, we're doing great. Like, we're doing real good. <laughs> I'm very proud of ourselves. And I yell, shut up, I need to concentrate. 
<laughs> yeah, you guys are just watching other people work, and they're like <laughs> sitting over here, like tinkering under lights. Yeah, it's good. Uh, okay, so back to Team Chef. Yep. Uh, another check, please. That would be a twenty-two total. Fourteen total. Excellent. You never thought that you could have a career in running a kitchen. But, you know, this good cop, bad cop thing, this is working real well. What, what kind of stuff are you guys saying to inspire these goblins so well? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. So effective. Come on. And I'm like, listen, guys, you're doing so great. You know, you don't have to get hit to do well also. I think we should start a union. And I'm just having like a unionized <laughs> conversation where I'm like, it's about your rights as workers. And you should be able to stand up for that. Moonhammer believes strongly in unions. Uh, so it's sort of like giving them a future. It's really just about building hope and then uh, reminding them to come out. <laughs> 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 All right, Team Trigger Cake. Uh, you're hearing these, uh, these inspiring words from over there, but they don't really help you at all. Quinny, how'd you roll? And that's a total of 20. Having dug in a little bit with your thieves' tools... Uh, weirdly, the damage you caused previously actually kind of helped you in this instance oh, uh, yeah. a little bit. So uh, you get the sense that you're, you're, you're on your way. Alan, your first attempt to enchant the trigger mechanism didn't work. What are you going to do? Can I try again? You absolutely can. Oh, my God, I'm going to try again. Because my spell book ain't helping much. Fucking hell. Sorry. Uh, nine total. <laughs> <laughs> this is proving harder than you'd, you'd ever possibly imagined. The idea of having to project your consciousness... <laughs> Into an object that you couldn't see. That's proving very difficult, and uh, you're starting to get a bit of a headache. Your vision's blurring a bit. This is uh, an experience All right. right. Can we make the cake bigger? I'm thinking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking what I can do <laughs> is I can conjure my unseen servant. We can stick him in the cake. And just instruct him to... Does an unseen servant have two hands? Like, I got follow-up questions on this. Because is it like a, like a, just a small, It's kind of like an amorphous human? blob that can interact with other objects. So could we give it a light crossbow in both hands to pop it, up and, like, John Woo it? It can trip a mechanism. Could we build but I don't two think it can light crossbows into the cake? <laughs> so you're asking me now to build a second... I'm just saying, if the fir- <laughs> you're doing so good on the first one. So why don't you build two? <laughs> why don't I build two? I think, we just tripled the size of the cake. Are we not running at a time? No, no, no. We're doing great. These goblins are so fast. This is this is happening in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> okay. You just asked if okay. we could double the size of the cake, and you're worried about time now? Well, I mean, yeah. It's just like a cake. I'm not talking about like building another crossbow. Okay, I've got a follow-up like, question. Like there are scales of time at this. Listen, takes. a lot of you goblins in here. Obviously, you've had just. A hell of a time. I mean, Grohl, what a dick, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a dick. Yeah, so... He's no king. Don't you want to, like, get yours? Don't you want to, like, get him back? Yes. With our help? Possibly. What if we make a cake that fits two goblins in it? <laughs> <laughs> bake us into a cake? No, 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 no. We'll bake the cake with a door, and then we'll put you in, and we'll put more stuff there with, like, air holes, and we'll icing it up so that once you go into the room, and he's like, oh, this is a nice cake, you can be like, get him, and then two of you can pop out and shoot him with crossbows. <laughs> Yeah, can we make as many spare cakes as possible just in case any of the cakes doesn't succeed at killing him? Quinny. So if he gets he, he, the crossbow misses him, we got another cake. <laughs> he can record. be like, oh, a few. Quinny flips a table. <laughs> For the record, also, if, if a goblin could fit in the cake, Quinny could fit in the cake. <laughs> yeah, no, but. Quinny's good at shooting things. No, but, but Quinny, Quinny doesn't have that, like, gut hate. Like, you need people who are fighting for something. Oh, I'm working up to the gut hate. <laughs> yeah, but Quinny might shoot us. So we want to focus on <laughs> the goblins are more possible? trustworthy than Quinny now. Listen, we've got a great baking team. Our stew's ready. I think we could build a giant cake. Roll me a, roll me a charisma <laughs> check. That's a nine. They don't think they can build a bigger cake. This they they've gone through most of the flour. Well, let's find out because I'm the nice guy. The middle warlord's the scary guy. Maybe check. I should put a little disagree. pepper in there. He says, yeah. "Let's find throw, out." Throw some come ons. He rolled a one. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little pimp him. First goblin says, uh, and keep in mind this isn't Garvo because uh, he's definitely on your side. But the uh, the goblin uh, baker who said, "I don't think we can bake a bigger, bigger cake." You're like, "Oh yeah, well let's see," and you just whip him as hard as you can at the cake, uh, which he bursts through, demolishing your your hard baked work. Wow, that's okay. I mean, we weren't on team cake, so I mean, our stew's looking good. <laughs> okay, so you now have no cake. The cake is a lie. Okay, new pitch. <laughs> Why don't we just make cookies? Because those are easy. No, no, no. Let, let me roll with this. Do you have poison? Quinny? No, I have acid. Why don't we put acid in the cookies? <laughs> Can we do that? 
<laughs> well, can we bake a whole vial of acid into a cookie? I just or like a Christmas log, like a Yule log. You understand you have a stew, a liquid thing that could possibly hold another liquid in it without much difficulty. How, how, right good, is, how good is the cauldron? I thought we were just going to pour acid into a goblet can, can for him to drink acid from. Me, okay, Grohl, we've got bugbear. We fought a bugbear before. And then how many hobgoblins have we got? Two. We got two, two guarding the door. Listen, we got a good distraction stew. We're set on that front. I'm, I, this just seems overly complicated. <laughs> yes, it does, Alan. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, but in my opinion, it isn't. <laughs> Listen, guys, I understand where you're coming from. This seems complex. He's a warlord. Listen yeah. to his title. What's he good at? War. And what is he? A lord. And do you know what we call gods? The people who have that monotheistic belief? The lord. He is almost a deity. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> All right. I, I can sense there's a bit of tension in the room. <laughs> so how about this? We just bake one cake, and if we could all agree that that cake is delicious, <laughs> then we <laughs> bake another cake. <laughs> and this will be the final cake. <laughs> the last cake. I swear. Okay, what if we just make a normal cake? <laughs> We bake a normal cake, and we give Garbo a crossbow, and we just say, here's your cake, and then he just shoots someone. <laughs> okay, that's simple. That's not simple. Yeah. I don't want to abandon the cake altogether. We put no, a I lot of time right. into this cake. Acid and stew for good measure? Well, we're just going to pour it on the floor. It's a distraction stew. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Remember, that stew is just there to be ruined. I can't fo- My mind's a jumble. Yeah, but hot goblins are going to go scramble to eat the... It'd be nice to put some... All right, yeah, put acid in the stew. In this is my acid. <laughs> this is my personal acid. Give yeah. me that. <laughs> I'm going to choose what my acid goes into. Okay, so we have a cauldron full of stew, and let's try to bake a cake real fast. Anybody want to do a spot check on how long it takes to bake a cake? Like, can I just passive perception of 14 know it? Sure. <laughs> takes too long to bake a cake. Okay, I, I'm circling back uh, but, to cookies. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, <laughs> okay. Fine. okay, here's I'm, the thing. I'm hearing the you, middle of the cake doesn't need to be solid. So right. you can I am probably now scooping do scooping up less. bits of yeah. ruined cake there you go. and putting it on a plate oh, awesome. and being like awesome. slop. And I feel like is our, our, <laughs> stew, <laughs> our stew's ready, so I'm gonna go over and help sculpt a cake out of icing and pieces of cake. Roll me a dexterity check. That is uh six. It looks like a pile <laughs> of ruined cake. Perhaps Guys. get someone who's more dexterous to do it. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for those of you who have read the treatise, you will know that Appendix D deals entirely with rebuilding broken cakes for trap purposes. And so Lil Pim Pim manages to very quickly reconstruct a cake-esque <laughs> thing, thus making up for his mistake earlier of throwing a goblin through the previous one. Okay, so we have a cake with a crossbow in it. Alan, it's all you, buddy. You just got to magic up that crossbow and we're set. Yeah, can you do a spell? We're, we're still going with that? Well, Alan, if we leave a hole in the bottom so, of the tray, <laughs> could this unseen servant reach in and just pull the trigger? It, it can trip a mechanism. Yeah. Uh, Quinny, I would need you to roll to build the mechanism. Yeah. But, yes. All right, was. Quinny, build us a sick mechanism. Yeah, no problem. 15 total. You're able to rig up uh, just like a, a trip wire. So I, I look at everyone around the room and I go, listen, you guys were sort of a dick about the cake thing, but it clearly worked out. So thank you, Warlord. That's what everyone should say. Thank you, Warlord. Thank you, Warlord. The goblins are into it. The other two refuse to say, but I cast Thaumaturgy, and I make invisible voices that match their own speak from behind their shoulders. And I, like, tap the Warlord on the shoulder, so he looks at me, and they're both like, thanks, Warlord. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're welcome, guys. All right, let's go. Uh, I, need, I need to ask Garbo, like, how far away is King Grohl's throne room or, or wherever he is? So basically, the, um, the kitchen exits out into what used to be sort of a grand foyer, and then about 40 feet across the foyer is the, uh, the sort of entry chamber where the, uh, the two hobgoblin guards are, and then beyond that is King Grohl's chamber. So I just want to do like a, a mini speech to the rest of the goblins. Sure. We're, we're on, it, you know like that speech from Braveheart that he gives on the in front of the army where he's like, we got to stand up for ourselves and fu- fuck the British. And I mean, I'm even saying fuck the British. Like, it's a little confusing, but mm-hmm. like the spirit and passion are so there. And I take a little bit of the stew, which is a bright blue color, like a good stew, and I just paint <laughs> war paint on a little bit of my face. And then I ask them if they'll rise up with us to kill Grohl and take back this castle, which is rightfully theirs under their commander, the warlord, who's always been a boss. You take six points of acid damage from the he stew. Did, he said he didn't put the acid in. I did not put oh, acid in I the stew. I thought you did. You nope. guys have so many plans. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm blue and not acid burned. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
Some really hot cayenne pepper in there. Listen, <laughs> if it was burning something, it would have burned my hand, and then I wouldn't have put it on my face. All okay, right, so I give them the speech, and I want to convince them to go kill Grohl with us after the, the battle kick goes off. <laughs> so Tom agrees. <laughs> I, I'm going to roll removed his hat. persuasion. <laughs> yeah, do that. I got 16 total. Uh, yeah, the goblins... <laughs> <laughs> The goblins really didn't want to do this plan, but then the goblins rolled a two. <laughs> so I guess the goblins are okay with this. Yep. They nice. will they will fuck the British with you, sir. So we take the <laughs> remainder of the pots and pans spread throughout the kitchen and we build armor for each of the goblins and we arm them with a variety of tools such as knives. Uh, if they have those uh, serving forks, those, those prongy ones that are sort of sharper. Whisks. Those. Yeah, whisks. <laughs> One of them's just got a broom, but he looks great. Uh, and would they line I'm up? Gnarly looking egg beater. They, they line up off to the side. So our game plan is: we're going to send Garvo through. He's going to carry the stew up to the door. He's going to spill it on the ground in front of the hobgoblins. And then when they start to yell at him, Quinny and Alan are going to lean around, and Quinny will like shoot one of them with his crossbow or crossbows, your choice. Uh, sure. And then Alan will hit the other with a spell. Yeah. And then I will throw a hammer after that at whoever's still fucking around. Uh, and do you want to throw a hammer? Yeah, why not? All right, so I give the warlord a hammer. So we're just going to hit him with like surprise shitload of throne stuff. Okay. okay. So I'm I'm taking this time now to conjure my unseen servant. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. That's, yeah. That's I just want to put him in... Put him in the cake. Oh, nice. Physically. He's going to live in there. Because he can't walk. Just keep things straight. One of your hand crossbows is in the cake. It is, yes. Great. I only have one hand crossbow. So he has his hand crossbow ready to go. She's ready My to go. My servant knows not to trip the mechanism until... Uh, until the sights are clear on Grohl. Yeah, he won't know that. Because he's inside the cake. The moment Look, somebody, we'll the moment somebody cuts right? the cake, <clears throat> it'll shoot them. Does that work? So Unless one of the hobgoblins cuts the cake and goes to feed it to Grohl. No, no, no. We're not sending the cake through right now. It's just stew. Fuck. What? I can't. I am. I'm. Listen, I can't there's, keep track of this. there's two. Th this plan's really simple. So it's I don't real know simple, Alan. There, there's two steps, it's Alan. Real simple. Step one <laughs> Stu goes through, Stu gets through? dropped. We okay. kill hobgoblins. Okay. That's step one. Then we go up to the door. And Which we one send, of the goblins is named Stu? That is the one on the left. The okay. one on the right is Steve. Got it's it. Stu and Stu Steve. Stu and Steve. Got it. So we're going to kill them. Then we go up to the door, and then we send Garvo through with the cake. And the moment the cake goes off, which is a second <coughs> battle, okay. then we murder everybody along with the team of chefs. Wait, how many people are inside the throne room? We know for sure that uh, King Grohl is there and that he's taking a single Okay, we're going to be there. I'm likely, just going to yell, serve it now. And Je <laughs> That's Jeffrey be is so likely super clear. there as well. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. Jeffrey, my beloved pet. All right, so we line up by the door so we're hidden, but we can do our attacks, and we we put the chefs on the other side so they'll charge if I wave them through, and then we just send Garvo in to be awesome. I'm going to rename my servant. I don't want to call him servant. That you makes me feel really bad. probably name whatever you want. He's not a servant. He's just going to be tiny. Is it because he's really big, and it's one of those like ironic like gangland nicknames? No. <laughs> yeah, just giving him a diminutive name. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to go up to the door. We're ready to kick some ass. And then I'm like, Garvo, you got this, buddy. And I give Garvo one gold piece because we're working our way to that five because I oh. want to know that we're good for it. I can open my own hotel with this. Cross your fingers for Garvo's deception check. He walks up, and the, the two hobgoblins are very attentive. They're, you know, they're, they're very, these are like sort of the elite guard of the, the King Grohl's retinue. But uh, Garvo, being a, a good helper goblin and feeling the weight of that one gold piece in his pocket, not only does he trip and drop the stew, he convincingly catches his toe on, like, a non-existent lip. Like, he really, he sells the shit out of tripping. And he's like, oh, no! Oh, Garvo, <laughs> so sorry! And, and Steve's like, hey, you spilled your namesake. And Stu's like, shut up, that's... <laughs> Fuck you, man. Oh, come on. Grohl's going to hate this. We got to we gotta clean this up. And one of them goes over and he picks up Garvo by the throat. And he's like, you piece of shit. And he just starts pummeling Garvo. Oh, man, we got to shoot. It's Garvo. No, oh, wait. <laughs> Do we, though? <laughs> I want to see what he... <laughs> We'll see what he does next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I let the warlord hold me back. <laughs> he does uh, eight points of damage. Oh, Jesus Christ, Garbo's <laughs> dead. Garbo. <laughs> <laughs> Whose body hangs limp. <laughs> Before being flung to one side. <laughs> with a small clinking of gold. And I just yell, you motherfuckers! And I run around the corner and I throw two hammers, one at each of them. Okay, uh, roll your, your attacks. Uh, the first one's fine, the second one will be at disadvantage because you're throwing with your offhand. So the guy who murdered Garvo is, is... Oh, natural 20. There we go. I like that for the first one. Second one. 
Oh, that's holy shit! Just Jesus, you know what? You rolled two twenties in a row. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you both. That's sick. You're just full of rage <laughs> for your uh, your first union convert going down. So uh, <laughs> roll them hammers. <laughs> Excellent. Roll your damage. Nice. So the first one hit guy punching Garvo, so he took four, which I guess was Steve, and then Stu was the other one, and he took eight. Uh, Stu is, is is caught. Like he was leaning over to start cleaning up the stew as uh, Steve dealt with the. Uh, Garvo uh, with Garvo, and uh, so he just he takes the hammer like right to the top of the head. You see him drop to one knee and just kind of uh, looks really fucked up. Um, but uh, Steve looks uh, Steve looks like he's doing all right. And he's like, "What intruders!" And he turns and rushes towards the door. But you're still in a surprise round, so I'll fire off a crossbow bolt. Fire at will. Eleven. Eleven to hit will not. Little pim pim. I hurl a javelin. Nice. 12 uh, total. So sadly, you will also not hit the Hobgoblin. It's all down <laughs> to you, Alan. I'm throwing five magic missiles. Jesus. They all hit. Dart one gets two damage. Dart two, four damage. Dart three, five damage. Is Steve dart dead? Dart four, three damage. Dart five, two damage. The last two darts hit a corpse as it falls <laughs> <laughs> against the door and slides, leaving a, a slick of blood. The other Hobgoblin still up. Uh, so we move into initiative. <laughs> Ten total for ta- uh, Quinny. I rolled a nat 20. Four total for me. <laughs> Little pimp him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, three total for me. He's fired up about his union worker going down. Butthole, top of the round. All right, I'm going to sprint over to Garvo. I have a cantrip that can spare the dying. So if they're within saving throw range, it immediately stabilizes them. So okay. I'm going to spare the dying on Garvo. All right. And yep. I'll keep my shield up towards the other guy. And I send uh, Goblin Jr. after the Hobgoblin just to like, try to bowl him over, like keep him down, slow him down. How often can you do that, the save dying? Can't try. I can use it forever. Oh, good. I was worried that you just used it on a goblin <laughs> instead of one of us. A but goblin <laughs> or the goblin? A goblin. Garvo. Hey, sure, listen, a goblin. I'm not letting us build that cake for fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah, you've stabilized Garvo. He, uh, his tiny, battered goblin body looks uh, looks slightly better for it. Nice, so I'm going to stay hunched over him with my shield up towards the other hobgoblin, and Goblin Jr. is just like, no, no, Quitting, you're up next. Harassing him. I'm going to run up to him and get uh, get stabby. Get stabby. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use my plus one uh, short sword. Mm-hmm. So that's my die roll, which is a 19 uh, plus six. That will, that will hit. Excellent. For damage. Oh, I really flung that. That was a two. He's very bloody, but he's still up. Okay. Brings us to his turn. He yells, Stew! Stew! <laughs> he's going to swing his sword mightily. Swing it at Quinny. He will strike you mightily. Dang. Uh, for six points of damage. Ooh, Next up, we point. have Lil Pim Pim. I'm going to uh, throw, I'm going to smack him with a hammer. Great. Toss that hammer. Two. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you, threw, you threw your javelin, and that didn't work. So you were like, wait a minute. I should use this hammer, but having never thrown a hammer before in your life, you throw it mightily with all your strength, and the handle bounces off the hobgoblin's shoulder. And he's like, well, who keeps throwing hammers at me? But I'm, like, super proud of you for where I am. I know this is mid-combat, but I'm like, you hit the target. Like, uh, still a step in the right direction. I'm a shitty warlord. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's getting so down on himself. <laughs> Pim Pim, you can still move if you want. Do you want to move up and uh, whip out your sword for next round? Yes. You throw your hammer, you decide ranged weapons, not your jam. Uh, you rush in there. Alan, mm-hmm. it is your turn. I'm still feeling like uh, avenging our friend. Because, you know, one hobgoblin <laughs> <laughs> killed him. <laughs> Probably the rest are bad, too. Because this you is agree how... With this, Sildar this, about, this is uh, how I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm only learning yep. <laughs> from, from the people around me. I learned it from you. Um, so I've seen <laughs> two goblins die from acid splash. Let's see how a hobgoblin dies. <laughs> <laughs> that is... That is Holy officially Alan's God. catchphrase. Let's see how a hobgoblin dies. Jesus. The answer is covered in acid. <laughs> <laughs> two acid damage. Well, he had one HP, so that is one acid damage too many. Uh, and with, uh, with his eyes still full of vexation about all the thrown hammers, <laughs> they slowly turn to jelly as the acid heats away his face, Alan style. <laughs> and he falls to his knees, dead. Unlike our friend Garfo. So we're out of initiative order. Quinny, I assume you're going to listen at the door to see if... Uh, you got it. Well, before we get any further with our friend Garvo, I'm going to look over at Quinny and just say, 
How are you feeling? Do you need to be healed, or are you okay for a bit? I think I'll be okay. You can do, like, combat healing, right? Like in the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I haven't used any, any spells I'm 15. today. I should be okay. So I'm going to okay. reach down to Garvo. I, I'm going to call the rest of the goblins in to come and get ready to go fight in the, in the, the room, and I'm going to make this a little bit theatrical. Uh, and I'm going to stand over, over Garvo and let, like, just be like, it's, it's so sad. But sometimes a union can bring victory. And I'm going to reach down, because they think he looks dead. But I put a hand on him, and I, I cast Cure Wounds. And, and I, I, I fart and burp at the same time, and they both run in like a swirling, sinuous snake down my arm in like a, a blue light. And then they go into Garvo's body, and because uh, I'm really over-equipped to heal a goblin, uh, he is automatically at full health, completely recovered. Garvo sits bolt upright and says, <gasps> I saw her. I saw Moonhammer. And I just burst into tears. Like, just, <laughs> just uncomfortably joyful tears. And, and I hold him, and I just, I just sob. Just, just so happy that he's there. And I, I, I take, like, like all, all the other gold out of my pocket, and I give it to him. And it's just, it's amazing. And, so you and, say all the other gold, the other four pieces? Yeah, I take everything that I owe him, and I give it to him. And I'm just like, God, I can't, I can't even say how much, how much this means to me and how much this means to every other follower of Moonhammer. Just, oh, I just can't wait to write a letter to that butler. It's emotional. Fiddlesworth. Oh, poor Fiddles, Fiddlesworth needs to know. Uh, and then I just say, Garvo, will you take this cake in and take this castle back for your people? I have but one request. And Garvo reaches down and picks up the hammer that the warlord threw. He said, as long as I may do it in the name of Moonhammer. And and I just start jumping up and down for joy. And beside us, like, Goblin Juice is running in circles around us. He's so fucking, you know that thing where, like, a dog is, like, so good that it can't slow down? And I'm like, (laughs) yes, yes, you can have that. And I I take some of of the rope that Quinny has, and I make him a belt. Stop taking my ropes. Hey, listen, I burnt mine (laughs) in a fire. So I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's okay, I, I, Quinny. I've, I've got a spare. Or no, 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 no. no. I give Quinny it. back his rope. Fine. I take I take some a belt off of one of the two hobgoblins, and I put it around his. I assume he's wearing like a burlap sack, Dobby style. Uh, and I, I put it around, <laughs> and I hang the moon hammer hammer off the back of it, so that Grohl won't be able to see. And then I gesture the, the goblins to either side of the door, so we're all ready to go. And we line up by the door again. And then I'm like, Garvo, you fucking got this, buddy. Warlord, is there anything you want to say to Garvo before he goes in? Don't fuck this up for us. Okay, that wasn't what I was expecting, Garvo. Uh, oh, okay, but yeah. he's in bad cop mode. <laughs> how about this? Uh, I really believe in you, Garvo. I'm sorry that I just let the guy beat the crap out of you and then he died temporarily. <laughs> okay, uh, let's... It was worth it so I could meet the goddess Moonhammer. Good. Oh, and you know God. what? I don't think you're that bad a cop after all. Thank you. <laughs> and that's the real lesson here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I grab the warlord and move him away before he could ruin this for a third time. Uh, <laughs> and we all get into position to send Garvo through the door. <laughs> you, you can just laugh, Brandon. You're not <laughs> so Garvo, with, the a, cake. with a new sense of purpose, he, he hoists up the cake. And uh, with you know more moxie than, uh, than a goblin traditionally has, oh, shit. He, kicks, <laughs> he kicks at the door a couple times and says... Cake delivery, your highness. <laughs> Happy birthday. And I look at the Goblin Jr. and I'm like, he's crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh, some muttering from inside. But Garvo, knowing how Grill tends to roll, doesn't uh, wait for the door to open. He opens it himself. And he just walks in holding the cake out. From inside, you hear um, sort of a, a very silky voice say, like, really, Grill, it's your birthday. And Grill's like, well, every day is your birthday when you're king. Sort of as you're peeking around, you can see he's kind of like he's sitting on an improvised throne. He's like rubbing his hands together. And he says, I hope it's Black Forest cake. The cake gets up close to him. Uh, what kind of cake was it? Uh, it, it uh, Black Forest cake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, making it easier for see, everyone. Uh, Lil Pim Pim remembered that uh, when uh, in the long years that Grohl served as his underling, whenever Lil Pim Pim had some Black Forest cake, Grohl would look on with envious eyes. And perhaps that's where their, their feud began. <laughs> The days of no cake for Grohl and all cake for Pim Pim. So the cake has been delivered. Grohl leans forward, rubbing his hands together. And I just shout out, Tiny, now! Uh, And then as she yells that, we all lean out and shoot as well. And I yell the quip I've been saving for a while. Cake to meet you! (laughs) Jesus Christ. And I yell out my quip. Sorry if I triggered you. (laughs) 
We didn't sp- we, we spent- <laughs> stop using these terrible like <laughs> guys. We all spent so much time on the cake plan, we forgot to sort out the quips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> I don't know why. He's Alan, like just roll me a <laughs> roll me an oh, the guy. I mean, he is a warlord, you know. <laughs> it's it's all good. Roll me a, uh, an arcana check, please. 15 total. There's still a bit of, you know, mental stat- static going on around, but you and Tiny, you've got a real connection, a real bond. I mean, you know, he's no Goblin Junior yet, but maybe one day. <laughs> you feel the servant trip the trigger, launching the bolt directly into Grohl's face. Way to go, Tiny! <laughs> Grohl's going to take 11 points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Fucking Tiny! <laughs> I like she's she's so proud of Tiny. I'm just looking at the warlord like I told you this fucking cake would work. Look at these dicks. And I'm just I'm just looking at you and I'm like, this is a great idea. I'm glad that we took our time on this. I think it's working because of the quips. Uh, <laughs> I think the quips were a big part of this. <laughs> you can um, all try and tra- take your trick shots uh, through the door. So who are who are we seeing through the door? So as you kind of lean around the corner to see how the the trap went off, uh, you see Grohl sitting on an improvised throne. Uh, he's got a giant morning star uh, leaned up against it next to him. At his feet is a large gray wolf. Jeffrey. And uh, <laughs> standing off to one side, there is a figure in sort of a long purple cloak. Uh, she appears to be a female drow. And uh, much to all of your surprise, Ooh. and particularly Garvo's, in a giant cage behind her is an owl bear. It's a bear with an owl's face. <laughs> uh, truly okay, an owl's so... Bear. What is okay, the so I, I know, I'm answer. sure that I know in my learnings what a drow can do. Yeah. Drow are a very uh, highly secretive sort of uh, sect of the, uh, the elves. One innate power they all have is the ability to uh, summon an orb of darkness uh, because they, they live in mines and uh, underground. Uh, they've all become accustomed to that. So that's sort of just a magic cantrip that uh, dark elves can do. Beyond that, they serve the spider queen, Lolf. They tend to be very um, conniving. There's a lot of uh, the, the the rumors out of the Underdark is there's a lot of like trickery and backstabbing and all sorts of uh, ugliness of that sort. Mm-hmm. It's not entirely common to see one above ground, but you know you do every okay. so often. We all lean out and get our like sneaky. Yeah. So I'm gonna give mm-hmm. everyone but Quinny disadvantage on the pop out shot just because you're literally popping into a room and blind firing. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna give you advantage on it, but I will give you just like a, f- a free shot. A free shot. I, I'm gonna jump around the corner and then I'm going to squat down and, and fart and yell blue flame and I fart out of my butt and it swoops up over my head and I raise my hammer and it sparks at the power of moon hammer lighting the fart on fire into a blue flame that soars at King Roll because he's like hit and distracted he needs to roll a DC 14 dexterity check so he manages to leap aside but your flame does light up the birthday candles that were on top of the cake so you take that as a minor win I do take that as a win that's fucking cool Grohl sort of like lurches to the side you blast a chunk off the back of his uh, his improvised throne a little pimp him I'm gonna use kindness my sword <laughs> and I'm going to throw it <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw it at him and hopefully behead him <laughs> all right Hurl that sword with all your might. 22 total. You mightily hurl your blade. You manage to hit him. Uh, It does not behead him, unfortunately, but you can roll your damage. So 1d8 plus your strength. Nine. Grohl is really having a... He's having a shit day today. (laughs) Um, All right, Alan. I'm going to hurl Witch Bolt at the drow. Oh, my God. Yeah, all right, do it up. (laughs) Oh, that was a one. That one. You know who's in that room? Oh, fuck. Are you going to hit Garvo? <laughs> I fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Deal me uh, one round of Witch Bolt damage, please. Max damage, max damage, max damage. Eight, eight lightning damage. Isn't that the amount just, of damage that... So Garvo, Garvo. Garvo turns around and he's like, Garvo did good, right, guys? And then the lightning just blasts him across the room or he falls limp and smoking in a corner. I'll start rolling death saving throws for Garvo. <laughs> Guys, I am just, I'm resting my head on the microphone right now. Like, <laughs> he has to have been weakened from being dead before, right? Guys, Witch Bolt has been really bad for me so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you didn't use a magic missile that doesn't miss. Quinny. What, what, what else is going on in this room? This clearly was once a very grand uh, chamber, but Craigmore Castle's in disrepair, so there's, you know, there's no roof. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's wide open. Oh, there's no roof? You oh. notice that um, the goblins have kind of hung up some tapestries and stuff. You know, they've written their logo over top of pre-existing deities stuff. Mm-hmm. 
So directly in front of you at the far end of the room, uh, there is a, the improvised throne. From where you're standing on the door, off to the left is the owl bear cage. You get the sense it's been brought as a gift. The drow is with the cage off to the left, and Jeffrey the wolf is at the foot of the throne, and Grohl is on the throne. Garvo has been tossed against the wall behind the throne, <laughs> where he is slowly bleeding to death. The back left corner of the room has a doorway, which is closed. You can also see just kind of an open, um, an open door off to the right. I'll, I'll loose an arrow at uh, King Grohl. Do it up. 19. That'll yeah. hit. So it's three damage. Three damage. Okay. Everybody, please roll initiative. How much does he have in terms of power? Many. My initiative is six. Four. Mine's seven. 16. I also yell over my shoulder, goblins, now! Uh, and the union storms in. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear the people sing, singing the songs of angry men? Yeah, but they're singing like angrily, like it's a punk rock remix. Like, <laughs> one of the goblins who looks the most like Marilyn Manson like pitched like a retake that's like darker and more violent, and that's what they're singing. We're all goblins <laughs> in a <the> castle. <laughs> <laughs> so, top of the round, King Grohl uh, looks down at the sword at his feet, looks up at little Pim Pim and says, Nice sword. Think I'll keep it. It must be my birthday. And he picks up kindness in one hand, and he grabs his mace in the other, and he, uh, he starts stalking across the room towards you. I say, get him now, and hope that the hilt of my sword opens up and the bees come out. <laughs> Turns out you do catch more things with honey. <laughs> Grohl is swarmed by bees. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give him disadvantage on the first round of combat. <laughs> All right, so he's getting sore by fucking bees. <laughs> the sad thing is, this is still only Grohl's second worst birthday. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ryan. Is this situation now too incredulous for you? Because we didn't bake a crossbow into no, a I was by that, but, but I, I felt like we took time to prepare that. <laughs> So uh, he's swarmed with bees, and he uh, he stalks up to you and uh, swings your own sword and his mace at you, little Pim Pim. He's swinging at disadvantage because he's covered in bees. <laughs> so he misses with the sword, and now he's going to swing his mace. He will miss. Mm-hmm. He'll miss with uh, both of those. You get the sense that if he hadn't been swarmed by bees, <laughs> you'd be in a world of hurt right now. <laughs> Bees save the day yet again. And having seen what's going on, I yell to all the goblins from the bakery, Save the warlord! Kill the king! (laughs) Great. Quinny. Uh, I will, um... I'm going to... We do have a drow who's done nothing that's making me... I'm I'm going for the drow, and there's a caged owlbear behind her. So what I'd like to do is try to get the key to the cage off of the drow. Hopefully sneak up during like the chaos of battle. But I understand if she's like, I see you, little man. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what she says. Okay, all right. Uh, I still uh, I tackle her, and in tackling, I hope to get a key off of her. I'm gonna so. need you to uh, roll to tackle. Give me an acrobatics check. Total of twenty two. She attempts to dodge but fails. So why don't you roll for your sleight of hand? Uh, natural twenty. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> As the DM said, there's no longer going to be an owl bear in this fight. <laughs> <laughs> On the contrary, there could still be an owl bear in this yeah. fight. So you uh, you managed to uh, to steal the key, but also as you go, you realize something is a bit off. It seems that the armor that the drow is oh, wearing shit. doesn't seem to be made of metal, but rather of flesh. Fuck. Oh. Roll me an insight check, please. Total eight. You have no idea what that means, but it concerns you greatly. I exclaim, "What the fuck!" And I toss the key into the cage with the owl bear. That brings us to the... She's got skin armor, guys. <laughs> brings us to the drow, who yells, My keys! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Little man, you truly are the couch of my existence. And she throws like two super quick punches at you. Um, she will strike you with the second one and will deal you uh, seven points of damage. Oh, and she hits hard. Brings us to the owl bear. The owl bear looks at the key on the ground. Kind of like pokes it with its beak. It goes, Maw. bring us to Alan. I'm going to try to cast blindness on the drow. She can make a constitution saving throw at the end of each turn to end the, end the spell. Okay. It only succeeds on a failed constitution saving throw. All right. Yeah. Con save it is. And she fails. Woohoo! She's blind. Sweet. Quinny thanks you. I have eight health. 
Where did you go, little man? <laughs> your tricks will not keep you safe. Oh, you are getting some advantage attacks coming your way, lady. <laughs> Butthole. First thing I do is I, I look at Goblin Jr. and I go, Go fuck up, Jeffrey! <laughs> <laughs> and I send wolf on wolf violence. <laughs> um, and then I am going to... I want to get to go, but I want to loop past Quinn because I got my touch spell for cure yep. wounds, but I have to touch him to do it. So essentially, I want to run by and tag him, but end up over where Garbo is. I'm going to give Grohl an attack of opportunity as you do. So I'm going to. Uh, so he's going to swing. He will hit. He will do Ow. you 11 points of damage. Don't think I don't see you, big man. I hope you enjoyed that cake, tubby asshole. <laughs> I didn't get a bite of it yet. Oh no, you got your first bite. We got plenty more where that came from. plenty bite of its own. So as, I, as I'm dashing past, I'm going to reach out and, and tag my main man, Quinny, over here. And I'm going to fart out some healing. <laughs> 13 health. Excellent. And then I'm going to end up over Garbo. Up next is Thank the you. Goblin Union. So the Goblin Union will, uh, will rush in, and they're basically going to try and help little Pim Pim fight and Bring distract, down Grohl, uh, yeah. Grohl. They realize that they recognize the sword of their uh, bad cop uh, being held in the, the fist of Grohl. So they're going to attempt to wrestle the sword back out and give it back to little Pim Pim. Come on, guys, you can do it. Grohl rolled a one to hold on to the sword. As Butthole runs by, he strikes him with the mace, but while he's looking away, the little goblins jam a bunch of forks into his bee-stung hands, and he drops the blade to the ground. And it stabs him in the foot, doing tan <laughs> <laughs> Don't press your luck. Um, all right, Garvo, death saving throw. He succeeds. Little Pim Pim, you're standing directly in front of Grawl, and he looks at you, and suddenly it all clicks. He goes, I only know one man who would fill a sword hilt with bees. You've come back, little Pim Pim. That's right. I'm back, and I'm better than ever. You know, we're not so different, you and I. <laughs> A psychotic warlord and an evil goblin king? They're practically twins. Will Lil Pim Pim successfully sue for peace with Grohl despite his own violent insanity? Will our heroes figure out what makes the black spider skin so weird to touch? Will they ever actually look for frickin' Gundren? Listen on to find out. And if you like what you hear, you can follow us at DD and D Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. That's double D A N double D Podcast. You can also support the show and further our journey through our Patreon at patreon.com slash garbage productions or visit our website at garbageproductions.net, not .com. The .com will be full of bees. We are garbageproductions.net. But more important than all that, tune in next time for another episode of Dum Dums and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs>